Brother McKinney was trying to decide which class he wanted to go into this morning. And uh, I guess he can go in whichever one he takes an ocean. Amen. I heard somebody say he's thinking about the first class. Amen. Well, he can, he can go wherever he takes an ocean to go. I'm not telling him not to. Amen. Um, I uh, um, prayed yesterday morning. I've been praying on my way back and forth to Portageville. And I prayed yesterday morning. I said, Lord, you know we're really busy, a lot going on, and I don't have the, the study and preparation time. But if you'll work on my mind and uh, let me be pondering and thinking, and uh, as he does so often, he answered that prayer. Now, uh, I, I'm not going to speak this morning quite as long as he worked on me. Amen. And I'm, I'm sure you'll be grateful for that. Uh, but uh, 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 I'll I tell you what I did have this week. I had somebody that told me that they like to come to our church because of how early we get out compared to some other churches. Now, what do you think about that? So, they're starting to give me a complex, Brother David. They really are. Um, it, it, it affects me so much, I'm probably going to shorten it by like three minutes today. John chapter number 12 and verse number 9 says, Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priest consulted. This is kind of comical to me, and you're going to see why in a few minutes. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. And when it says they went away, it means it went away from what was traditional to them and they believed on Jesus Christ. Just for a little background sake, Lazarus and his sisters Mary and Martha, they were some of Jesus' best friends. And the Bible says, I believe on more than one occasion, Brother Robbie, that uh, Jesus loved them. There was a strong platonic friendship between Mary, Martha, Lazarus, and Jesus. John 11 and 4 says, when Jesus heard that, which is Lazarus is sick. Messages come that Lazarus is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. The point here is that the glorifying of Jesus Christ was indeed present for Lazarus' resurrection. There's nobody that can dispute or doubt that when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, Mary wasn't saying, Lazarus, come forth. Martha wasn't saying, Lazarus, come forth. None of the rest of their friends were. None of the disciples did. But when Jesus showed up and said, Lazarus, come forth, there is no doubt that glory was manifest in him. But my point and my message and the main thought of this today is that the glory of God would be more profoundly and eternally manifest in the faith that was given birth to at Lazarus' tomb than was, in fact, the resurrection itself. Because it was a desire of God to see faith built in them that he truly could do anything. Anything. So Jesus was called. He was troubled. He loved Lazarus. He loved him so much that I, I got to thinking as I read this and I, I read the footnotes in the Apostolic Study Bible. How many of you read your Apostolic Study Bibles and enjoy them? There's some tremendous, tremendous notes and helpful things at the bottom. But I realized that Bethany, where Jesus was, or where Lazarus was, that Jesus, however it was, was all of about two miles from where Lazarus was. And I realized, and, and those of you that are planning to go with us, Lord willing, next year, 
that it was just on the east side of the Mount of Olives on the Jericho Road. And once again, I read something in the Bible that I've now seen for myself. And in fact, you can, but for one hill, you could see Jerusalem from where Lazarus was. But Jesus waited two days. Everybody say waited two days. That ain't how it works. Somebody calls you up on the phone and tells you, well, you just say, for instance, Sister Sharon's been babysitting for her grandchildren, and I'm sure that they have all enjoy that. But she's in Jackson. It's a lot further away than Bethany was from Jerusalem. But if Sister Stacy calls Sister Sharon Tuesday morning, not this week, but when y'all get done off vacation, my story's got to stay with the thing. And Sister Stacy calls and says, Sharon, Brother David just fell out at work. I promise you, she's going to say, can't get there for two days. You following me? But instead, she's going to call John, Katie, one of y'all get home. Call a neighbor. If the meter man's in the front yard, get in here and watch these kids. Call the police. Or as a last resort, load them up and bring them with you. Yeah. But she would be making movement to come right then. But Jesus, somebody sent word two miles away to Jesus. Lazarus is sick. Well, everybody knows what business Jesus is in, right? Somebody sick comes in contact with Jesus, there's a good chance they're going to get healed. So Jesus loved him so much and thought so much of him that he hung around where he was at for two more days. After proclaiming that this sickness is not unto death. What does this say to us with regard to the power of faith coupled with the fruit of the Spirit? We have a fleshly mentality of how we react when we hear of an emergency and we'll all do it. But what does it say to us that Jesus Christ, God Almighty, declares this sickness is not unto death, then waits two more days? What does it declare to us with regard of the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance? Long-suffering, obviously, is patience. So what does it say to us with regard to the power of faith when it's coupled with the fruit of the Spirit. Jesus, who knows the beginning from the end, who is God manifest in flesh, Brother Justin, he does not have to get in a hurry. Why? Why does Jesus not have to worry about getting in a hurry? Come on, think about this just for a minute. There was a guy one time named Jairus, that he came got Jesus and said, my little 12-year-old girl's near about dead. So Jesus and this crowd start following him. And somewhere in the middle of that crowd, there's this little lady who's had an issue of blood 12 years. And she forces her way through the crowd. I mean, it had to be that way. She touches the hem of his garment, Brother David. And virtue goes out of the Lord, who is on his way to heal a sick little girl. And you know what Jesus did? Stopped. I forgot to tell you the title of my message today. Fireworks Faith. And you're going to find out where it came from in just a minute. I already had the thought. But you're going to find out where it came from in just a minute. So, Brother David, the deal is Jesus knows who he is and what power he operates under. So, Jairus' friends 
They come to meet him while Jesus has stopped fooling around with this other lady. And they say, don't bother him no more. She's not just sick, she's dead. And the Lord turned to Jairus, who you know what he's got to be thinking. Come on, we got enough flesh in us, what are you thinking? Man, if you hadn't stopped, if you hadn't stopped and took care of her, you'd have got there in time. But now she's dead. But Jesus turned to Jairus and said some of the most beautiful and powerful words in Scripture, be not afraid, only believe. Man, how can you do that? How can you do that when you just got news that punches you right in the gut till there's the wind's all out of you? Jesus said, so Jesus waits two days, and then he goes to check on Lazarus. What does that do for us? I really feel like somebody needs to hear this this morning. It teaches patience. I saw yesterday. I saw yesterday. We sat there. It might have been 15 seconds, and I'm probably stretching it a little. But there were two people coming out of the ATM drive out here on 61 Highway. And they stopped to talk. Well, there's a car out there on the road wanting to turn in there. I saw them stop. Then I stopped. And somehow in that 15 seconds, the car in front of me, I couldn't can't tell you what they was doing because I really don't know. But whatever they did really upset the old boy coming out of the deal. But my point is, come on, think about it. You're in Walmart. You're in Walmart. And, you, and you've got like seven things in your buggy. And somebody's going through the super quick, duper fast lane. You're only supposed to have 10 and under, and they got 12. Come on, don't tell me you didn't count. <laughs> and you back it up, turn it around, and run over and shove it in another lane. Can't believe they took 12 items to the 10 item lane. Which is, look at here. Okay, ding, 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 10 times. Everybody all together, hold your breath. Let's do two more. Boom, boom. It's over. I'm not waiting. I'm not, I'm not waiting. Come on, come on. If them, if them, Shopping carts had a blinker on them. I'd have burned up every blinker in every one of them because I'll pull through and turn to up. Oh, nope, 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 too long, too long, too much junk. You know, when you see the pile over top of their head, you probably don't want to go in that lane. So we're so impatient. So the Lord's got to teach them something. When you're operating by faith in the Holy Ghost, Two days ain't nothing for what's about to happen. This te he's teaching them patience, which is undergirded by faith. The Bible says, in your patience, possess ye your souls. Which means that patience is simply under the influence of the Spirit, an exhibition of control over yourself. It is, a, it is a manifestation that I'm controlling me through the influence of the Spirit. Because impatience is simply a manifestation of a lack of self-control. Because whatever's got you agitated now controls you. Out at the ATM, two strangers... One of them is made angry, mad, probably throwing up some signs and stuff. <laughs> saying some bad words because they got held up between 10 and 15 seconds. And now a total stranger has taken control over you. you say, well, how do you know all that? Because I sat there about eight of them seconds and I was already getting mad. When faith in God is...
is present 10 minutes or 10 years. We, we read an article, I think it was in the last Herald, about this lady that fasted two days a week for like 30 years. Fasted like two days a week for 30 years for her son to be, her lost son to be saved. I talk about faith in God. And when faith in God is present, he's in control. And not my situation is in control. I should have got a lot of amens, either that or I should have got a lot of, oh, get off my toes. Can I get an amen? <laughs> After the waiting period, Jesus says, let's go wake Lazarus up. How many of you are ever, ever reading about the disciples and you wonder if some of them's elevator goes plumb to the top? Because they sure say some goofy stuff back to the Lord sometimes. The Lord says, let's go wake Lazarus up. And the disciples said, hey, if he's asleep and he's sick, we don't need to bother him. Because everybody knows sleep makes you sick and get better. That's in the Bible. You can read it if you'd like to. John chapter number 11. The disciples are unaware that Lazarus is dead, so they resist the idea. Because anybody knows that sleep is good for recovery. John 11 and 14 says... Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And 15, look here. And I'm glad. That's how the next one starts off. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe. I don't know if we're aware of it or not, but we like miracles, we like signs and wonders. We like people getting repented of their sins, getting baptized in Jesus' name, getting filled with the Holy Ghost evidence by speaking in other tongues. We like to dance, we like to shout, we like to sing good songs. We like to, you know, dress up at Easter and dress up at Christmas and have an egg hunt and have a few dinners. And we like to have all the whole package that comes with church. But without faith, none of it means anything. Without faith, we're just a, 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 another form of a country club or a dance hall to turn this into a stage. Because faith is what takes us from this realm into a heavenly realm, a spiritual realm. And I'm glad for your sakes because what's about to happen in your lives is going to give birth to a faith that is going to propel you into an arena you never imagined you'd be in. The crucial main point of this miracle, it wasn't so Jesus could show out. It wasn't so Jesus could show off. It wasn't so Jesus could let him know once again that everything, even death, is subject to him. But it was to build their faith Into a place where they said he can do anything. Jesus arrived, and as he gets there, Martha, who if you study out the, the, the relationship here, Martha is the doer. Martha is impetuous. Martha is, you know, a jump-the-gun kind of a gal. And she runs out and meets Jesus and falls down and says very quickly, if you would have got here in time, you would have healed my brother of that sickness. Then they go on to have a little dialogue. But then a little further along, Jesus runs into Mary. And guess what Mary says? She runs and falls down at his feet and says, If you'd have got here a little earlier, my brother would have been healed. And it's an expression of faith. Do you see that? They both had faith that if Jesus would have got there before Lazarus died, he could have healed him. Right? You see that? It is faith. It's limited, but it's faith. Jesus then asked him, said, where have you laid him at? Take me to the place. And then I'm not going to preach about it this morning. I've got an entire message where I use the shortest text in the Bible. John 11 and 35. 
Come on, every Sunday school kid who's ever been asked to memorize a verse knows John eleven thirty five. 35. Jesus wept. When you read the story in its entirety, you understand that Jesus is not weeping because Lazarus is dead. Jesus is weeping because of what Martha, Mary, and Lazarus had to go through in order for the people's faith to be built. He's not weeping because he's dead, Brother Pete, because he knows here in a few minutes he's coming out. <laughs> That's been the plan all along. But the sickness, but the pain, but the agony that they had to go through, and then the agony of loss for his two sisters, and then even Jesus seeing Mary and Martha doubting him and doubting his, his concern for them. The entire gamut of emotions is run, and Jesus weeps. And then, <laughs> then Jesus says, Take the stone away. And Martha says, what? What did Martha say? Hold on a minute. You don't understand. Bubby's been in there four days. He's already breaking down. He stinks by now. It's a hot place over a hot, dry climate. You don't keep the dead out for a few days. You put them in the ground quick as you can. Wait a minute, Lord. He's been dead for four days. By now, he stinks. John 11 and 40. Jesus said, Jesus said unto her, Didn't I tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? I don't know if they were expecting a beautiful bouquet or whatever laid at the tomb of Lazarus. But Jesus had big plans showing up at Lazarus' tomb, and he told them, just believe. Y'all remember that course we used to sing? I had a, a crazy picture in my mind every time we would sing it. And y'all may have to help me because it's been a long time. Uh, only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Y'all remember that? Anybody remember that? We used to sing it quite often. I about did it this morning. You're probably thankful that I didn't, but I, I about did. But if you just believed, you would have seen the glory of God. Then you, you, need to, you need to really read this when you go home. But they rolled away the stone. And the Bible said Jesus lifted up his eyes and began to pray. And he his prayer is... I'm praying for their benefit because the intention of all of this is that they would believe. Then he cried with a loud voice. The Bible says he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. And verse 44 says, and he that was dead came forth. Bam. Bam. Many then came to believe on Jesus Christ. Many then came. They were drawn because they had heard that Lazarus was raised from the dead after being buried four days. But to say just as many as came to believe on Jesus Christ, also many searched for a way to discredit him. Verse 47, they said, you don't have to turn there because I'm just going to bust through them. Verse 47, they said, what are we going to do? We've got to do something. This man does too many miracles. There's too much, good, too much good stuff happening where Jesus is. He's healing the sick, raising the dead, doing all. We got to put a stop to it. Come on, are y'all not seeing the craziness? That's why Jesus wants faith to be built. That's why Jesus is interested. The intention is that you might have faith. What are we going to do? This man does many miracles. In 48, they said, if we don't do something, if we don't do something, everybody's going to be believing in him before he gets done. And verse 53 says, from that day forward, they counseled together to put Jesus to death. What is it when people are operating from a carnal standpoint? That they rob so many people of blessings and so many people of, of an experience that is unparalleled here on earth. 
simply because a relationship with Jesus Christ doesn't line up to what you think it might ought to line up to. Brother David, these were the same people that they read the Bible every service. They they read the scriptures every seven years. They read the incomplete Bible out loud. Boy, I'd be yawning like a champion trying to read the whole Bible out loud. It was the fulfillment of the Messiah had come. The chosen one, God himself manifests in the likeness of sinful flesh. And he's, he's healing people. He's delivering people. And now to put the cherry on top of the Sunday, he has showed up at Bethany and said, Lazarus, come forth. And he comes out of the grave. Bouncing in grave clothes. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. And when he took the grave clothes off, he's alive. And all they can think about is we've got to shut him up. Got to stop him. Got to slow him down. If you're Holy Ghost filled, and the devil ain't trying to stop you, it's because you ain't causing him no problems. So instead of us getting all tore up when the enemy comes against us, we've got to cling to the word of God as I preach Wednesday night. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. That's why you've got to have something that's real inside of you. This is not just to shake a hand and and say I believe and accept him as my personal Savior. But when I surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and the power of the Holy Ghost filled me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet, uh, I can now stand with assurance uh, and power and faith and demonstration. Instead, They decided there ain't but one solution. Ain't but one thing we can do. We got to kill him. I don't know if you're aware or not. Maybe you're not understanding or not. But but this ain't like six guys talking over a beer at the local tavern. This ain't some rednecks out in the middle of the woods at the deer camp. You do know this is the leaders of the church that have decided we've got to stop Jesus. Why? Why is it? Why is it they got to stop him and they're so adamant about it that they start conniving to kill him? They're conniving to commit murder. John 12 and 9, again, our text. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Do you all not see the irony in that? He's done been there. Huh? And you know what, Brother Billy? How crazy would it have been? If they go kill that rascal and Jesus shows back up and says, you got to be kidding me. (laughs) What good is it going to do to kill Lazarus? They don't even get it. Let me tell you a sign of spiritual maturity. When you stop getting mad at people's goofiness and you start feeling sorry for them. You start having compassion for them because they had no idea. (laughs) They had no idea. I remember a skit that was done over on the other side. Several people dressed up from different walks of life, and there was a song they sang at the end of it. it. Said, Let them know. Let them know. Tell them Jesus loved them so. He loved them so. That to Calvary he would go. 
feel the spirit of the Lord in here. The chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Listen to me right now. I want you to, you've got to receive this. It was too late. I said it was too late. They could kill Lazarus a thousand more times. But they couldn't do anything to the faith that was manifested when Jesus spoke, Lazarus come forth, and he came out. It wasn't because Lazarus was some great person that, the, that he needed to keep on living. It was so that faith would be built. Verse 11, because that by reason of him, of Lazarus, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus Christ. Everybody that I've talked to that knows anything about fireworks, we've been down in Portageville for three years. I'm telling you why I'm preaching this message this morning. No, no, this is an illustration for this message this morning. We're set up out of town just a little bit, Brother David. Not on the main drag, not on the main thoroughfare. Our signs keep blowing over. I'm not going to tell you everything we made. It, it'd blow your mind if I told you everything that happened. But the first year I was told, if you clear a couple thousand dollars, that's an amazing blessing. And we did. <laughs> the second year, I ordered about double what we did before, give or take. I had to make three more trips to go get more. This year, I ordered several thousand dollars more. Yesterday, I called my friend and I said, listen, bud, what do I do? I said, I keep ordering more and more and more and more. I want you to follow me now. I'm about to, I'm about to prove something to you. I keep ordering more and more and more and more. And I, the reason I'm calling you is guess what? I'm still running out. I need some more. I said, how do I order so that this doesn't happen? Here's what he told me. You can't. And here's why you can't is because you're experiencing the blessings of the Lord. Now, the Holy Ghost directed me after our first year that our first check, Brother Pete, goes to missions. The second year, if I told you what we did, oh my goodness, have mercy, you think I was lying. Second year, our first check went to missions. So there's a group of guys gathered around and they're talking yesterday morning before I called. And they said, what is going on in Portageville? What are they doing? They're selling everything they get. What's happening? And one of them said, I'll tell you exactly what's happening. The first check they write goes to missions. And here's what was said. I want you to listen to this right now. Here's what was said. You don't know if that's why they're being blessed. No, listen to me. You can't prove that that's why they're being blessed. You can't prove that them giving their first check to missions is why they're being blessed. Now, I, I don't know that I can express to you, show you, manifest to you, whatever, how mad, how redneck mad that I got instantly. Listen to me, Brother Pete. I, I'm, not, I'm not blowing smoke at anybody right now. I immediately started getting sick at my stomach. I was so angry, I about cried. Has anybody ever been there before? I was shaking. 
Can't prove it. Can't prove it. Because you see, they weren't insulting our ability. They weren't insulting our talent. But they were insulting our faith. And it is time and high time that we rise up. I'll, I'll defend my kids. I'll defend my wife. I'll defend my job. And I'll defend this church. But I'm telling you right now that I'm not going to fight as hard for anything as I am my faith. Because if I can believe in God, if I can keep on believing in God, He can do anything. He can do if I can keep holding on to what I know to be true about my Lord, He can do anything. I want to be so passionate about my faith. I want, that's why Jude said, when I, when I diligently sought what I ought to write to you, he said the Holy Ghost told me that you need to earnestly contend for the faith. I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, in the flesh, I was thinking I would like nothing better than to smoke him right between the eyes right now because it made me mad. I was shaking, I was quivering, and I understood something, Brother David. Lord, first off, I need you to forgive me. I shouldn't have got that mad at that feller. Because the Bible says, I told you all Wednesday night, the Bible will correct you. The Bible says, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. So it means if I get mad and punch somebody, I've just eliminated their wrong and elevated mine. So I had to say, Lord, forgive me. And then I'm walking across here this morning praying. And then you know what I had to say? Lord, I need firework faith. Not just this week. But I need firework faith for these people. Because there's some of them going through a trial. And just as sure, just as sure as I walk away from this parking lot every night, and I say, Lord, I cover it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every morning when I walk in the door, Everything's good. When the forecast says, in 102 minutes, you're fixing to get slammed with a thunderstorm and a light drizzle comes and then it's gone. You can't prove. <laughs> Let me tell you something, the proof's in the pudding, Brother McKinney. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Prove it. Prove it. Let me tell you how I can prove it. Because I'm still here. I said, because I'm still here. Because if it hadn't have been for the Lord who was on my side, when the enemy came against me, Sister Virginia, the Bible says he would have beat me. If it hadn't been for the Lord who was on my side, you know something, Sister Stephanie? It's that faith that I've got to get a hold of. And Sister Margaret, it might be two days. It might be three days. It might be a week or maybe just a couple of hours. But Sister Nadine, if I can hold on to my faith in God, time don't make no difference to him. Because one day with him is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. But I've just got to lock in with the Lord and got to understand heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The Lord hath given and the Lord hath taken away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. You hear me right now. Somebody can go into that firework tent and steal everything we got tonight. The rain can come and wash it away. But next year, when the fourth rolls around, I'm going to raise it up again because the Lord has proved to me that he's not forsaken us. The Lord has proven to me that his hand is upon it. The Lord has proven to me. And I don't have to prove anything to you because he's proven everything to me. I listened to Enlightened on XM, channel 65. If you got it, you need to listen to it sometimes. Brian Free and Assurance sing a song. 
that they're covering from Shirley Caesar. And it says, long as I got King Jesus, long as I got King Jesus, long, long, long as I got him, don't need nobody else. I've been lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated, abused, confused, and I forgot the rest of that part, but it says, long as I got King Jesus, long as I got King Jesus. He wanted their faith to be built to the point that they really believe God can do anything. I don't have to prove it. I know it. I don't have to prove that the Holy Ghost has changed me, kept me, blessed me, protected me, healed me. I know I've been changed. I know the hand of the Lord is on my life. Romans chapter 5, verse number 1. Therefore, be... <laughs> You can't prove it. I said, you can't prove it. Therefore, being justified by, oh, God have mercy. If we grasp a hold of what that scripture really means, uh, these pews couldn't hold us right now. These walls couldn't hold us right now. People would be flooding to the altar praying, Lord, increase my faith, restore my faith. Because justification means be proven to be right. Come on, you got to receive the word of the Lord this morning. I don't have to prove nothing. I am proven right by my faith. By my faith. We have peace. Look at here. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. By whom also we have. Stand with me. By whom also we have. We have access. By faith. And, oh Lord, do you see it? We have access by faith. Access. You know what that means? There's a door open. By faith. Into this grace wherein we. <laughs> well, I'm waiting on this and I'm waiting on that. I'm waiting on this. I'm waiting on that. I'm telling you, open your eyes and look where you are. We have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice. And rejoice in hope. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Let's see what, John, what the Lord told Martha, John eleven twenty five. 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead. He that believeth in me. I need to give these notes to a good preacher. Sometimes, Sister Sharon, I want to pull my hair out. I mean, I know it already has been, but I'm thinking about it. Because, Anthony, as long as I can believe, as long as I can have faith, I can do anything. Anything. Matter of fact, Paul even said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. It's my faith. It ain't my money. It ain't my talent. It ain't my